Hi, it's Friday, July 4th. Happy 4th to my American viewers. We're watching a new tropical depression that has formed off of the southeastern U.S. I've been posting about this over the past several days on my social media. We have kind of a classic quote-unquote homegrown setup where we have an old frontal boundary that has set up across the North Gulf Coast and off of the southeast U.S. coast. This pushed down off of the continent over the last few days. We have a big ridge sitting here over the Ohio River Valley. You can see it rotating clockwise on your screen there. And then we have another ridge over the subtropical Atlantic bringing southwesterlies out here. So we have this trough in the middle, and along there, there is some rotation kind of at the tail end over here to the east of Jacksonville, Florida, southeast of South Carolina. And at the moment, we do have a cyclone developing, and it might look a little bit intimidating here with this well-defined curvature and curling of this central convection deep thunderstorm complex here in the center has kind of a classic look to it with spiral curvature. However, if we get in close here, you'll notice that this is not in fact where the center of the storm is. This curling here is associated with the mid-level circulation center. The surface low is actually more like over here. So this is where the true location of TD3 is. You'll see easterlies to the north and then they rotate around and come out of the west on the south side. This here is simply mid-level. What this means is the vortex is tilted eastward with height, and this is because of some very obvious vertical wind shear, which is providing less than optimal conditions for tropical development. We have an upper-level trough established through here, and we have southwesterly wind pushing on the storm and pushing most of the thunderstorm activity off onto the eastern side. Water vapor imagery makes this a little bit easier to see. You can see northeasterlies and then southwesterlies on the other side of the trough pushing into TD3. So this is causing asymmetry. Most of the heavy weather is on the eastern side. We'll probably soon rotate toward the northern and eastern side over the next 24 hours, and that's how the system is likely to look going forward. This is the aircraft reconnaissance data courtesy of the U.S. Air Force, the 53rd Weather Reconnaissance Squadron. They found the center of low-level circulation right where we annotated it. The mid-level curling is over here, so again, this is the mid-level and this is the low level circulation confirming that tilt there. They found pretty light wind. There's not much of a compact inner core surface circulation uh, or wind field that we are particularly concerned about. The strongest winds are to the southeast of the center. 30 to 35 miles per hour is the maximum sustained level there, making this a tropical depression for the moment. Now, some slight organization of this could occur over the next 24 to 36 hours. It's going to scoot up into South Carolina in pretty short order, getting there overnight Saturday night or the wee hours of Sunday morning. It's not a lot of time. Wind shear will be decreasing during that time, uh, but this will likely run out of liquid real estate before it heads ashore and is unable to intensify further. It could technically become a tropical storm, just a slight bump in the maximum winds to at least 40 miles per hour instead of the current 35 would make this a tropical storm. We can see modeling in great agreement on the evolution of this. This is the GFS at the current time showing the surface circulation here, the mid-level circulation here, which is what we see in reality. You can see most of the dark green moisture on the eastern side of where the center is currently located, drier on the west side over the continent. And as we move forward in time, you'll see that the center of circulation remains on the western edge of the deep moisture. So most of the heavy rains are going to be mostly northeast and east of the center of this thing. And then it eventually gets directed up into South Carolina. And you can see it never really comes together. There's a lot of dry air getting injected into the inner core wind field of this thing. Again, most of the deep moisture sheared off to the northeastern side. That also means a lot of the rainfall will be to the right-hand side of the track. Wind-related impacts may be closer to the center of circulation as we have this coastal band of wind forecasted to form by most models along coastal South Carolina out ahead of the surface center coming ashore. And then we have some elevated winds out on the east side as well. This is the National Hurricane Center initial forecast for TD3, again initialized at 35 mile per hour intensity. A possible intensification to a weak tropical storm is possible before this makes landfall. According to this forecast, just after 2 a.m. Sunday morning, Eastern Time, the yellow band here indicates the tropical storm watch that is in effect as tropical storm force winds of at least 40 miles per hour could occur, especially in gusts along the coast. You can see that's near and just northeast of the landfall point there. 
Rainfall, though, will be tilted a little bit more towards the northeast. So you can see the landfall is supposed to go into South Carolina, but most of the forecast rainfall is actually along and up the coast, much further northeast of the landfall point. And the potential for flash flooding does exist, currently being characterized as marginal by the NWS Weather Prediction Center. So not a particularly high chance of flash flooding here, but certainly possible. So do be careful and keep an eye out on your local National Weather Service forecast office for the latest information in your area. And finally, there will be rip currents along the coast in red, high risk, yellow, moderate risk, according to this outlook from the National Weather Service. So do be careful during this holiday weekend as you're going out there toward the beaches, unlikely to be particularly nice weather, unfortunately at least after today. That's about it for this video. Just a quick one here on this July 4th holiday. Everyone stay safe. Watch out for potential flooding, primary risk with this one, but unlikely to get very strong. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.